Hello and welcome to our TownVote training video. When learning to use the software, make sure to activate your license by logging into either your Meridia or CloudVote account using your email and password. If you don't know your password, but have access to the email associated with the account, go to www.meridiaars.com backslash reset and choose a new password. We are proud to provide an unlimited license, so feel free to install and activate the software on any number of devices. However, be aware that without an active license, you'll be limited to only five clickers. We encourage you to follow along with the video and try things. There's nothing to break, and the point is to feel comfortable enough even with the sticking points so you can get out of trouble in the middle of a live meeting. We know, we've been there. It's not what you'd want to experience, so practice now. Look around TownVote and hover over the eye icons to learn more about the key features on every page. Let us know in the comments if the video was useful to you, if you find a sticking point, or if you have a great feature suggestion. We're always listening and want to make the software work for your workflow. In the main menu of EasyVote Connect, you'll be presented with four options. Select Voting and Elections to launch the TownVote app and get started on your voting session. After TownVote starts, you'll be taken to an agenda screen where you can create and edit motions to vote on. On the second and every subsequent launch of TownVote, you will see a prompt to restore previous session data, which makes it easy to reuse the previous session's agenda and participants so that you don't have to recreate or import them every time you start. Before you begin voting, first, input your participant information from the Participants tab on the left side of the screen. You'll notice two separate sections, one for offline participants and one for online participants. If you are conducting an in-person vote using keypads only, you can simply ignore the online participant information. If using a hybrid voting setup that includes both keypads and internet-based devices, both online and offline participant information must be in place before both parties can vote on the articles as if they were in the same room. Since we will only be voting with clickers for this session, all of our participant information will go in the offline section. Adding offline participants can be accomplished in two ways, either by entering each participant's personal information or by setting a keypad range. Adding participants by setting a keypad range is the more straightforward option and perfect if you wish for all of your voters to remain anonymous. Only keypads within the range will be included in the voting session. For example, if you set your keypad range from 1 to 100, all keypad IDs past 100 will be ignored. For our voting session, we'll set our keypad range from 1 to 500. This doesn't mean that all 500 will be shown on the screen. You can still customize the visualization of the voting later. To ensure that every participant vote is counted, Make sure to set a range that includes all of the keypad IDs that will be used for the voting session. Each extended range receiver has a limit of 2,000 keypads, and a stick receiver has a limit of 400 keypads. If no keypad range has been set, you will be prompted to do so when attempting to vote on your first motion. Normal voting assumes that each voter has one vote with no change in weight. When using weighted voting, Input your participant information using the individual participant section or set up a range and then come back to individual participant to continue to assign custom weights to your participants. If you wish to assign each clicker to a specific person, Offline participants must be added using the Individual Participant section rather than the keypad range. This section allows you to assign keypads to participants using the criteria of the keypad ID number and the participant's first and last name. The keypad ID is the human-friendly number on the sticker on the back of the keypad, not the serial number under the barcode. Weights can be assigned to each voter if necessary and participants can also be categorized and color-coded from the category box and the category color button. 
At minimum, the keypad ID number must be specified for that participant to be included in the list. Including the participant's first and last name is optimal. At least one participant must be included before you can begin voting. To add your first motion, enter the title in the Enter Agenda Item section. Then click the Add Item button, or press Enter. Here, you will be greeted with a dialog box with a list of options and parameters. These options allow you to customize the visualization of the voting display to fit the needs of your voting session. The Grid Type section allows you to choose between displaying an answer grid, a participant grid, which shows if and or how the voters vote, and a gridless, no grid option, showing just the motion text, subtotals, and total, as well as the pass-fail status. If you want everyone's vote to be visible either during the voting process or after the vote is closed, select the Participant Grid option. When a participant votes for or against a motion or chooses to record an abstention, with the Participant Grid enabled, their voting box will be highlighted in green for yes, red for no, or yellow for abstain. If you choose to delay showing of the voting results, the color coding will only appear after you close the vote. You can see either a name associated with the keypad or just the simple keypad ID here using the participant grid option, depending on whether or not you want to keep the vote anonymous. Choosing the participant grid option with delayed results is a great way to make sure that every vote has been counted without compromising the anonymity of the vote, which can prevent herd mentality. To use town vote for elections, choose answer grid as your grid type and enter the choices that the participants will be voting on. For example, a list of candidates for a particular position or other items that they may need to choose. If only one choice is allowed, you don't need to change anything else. Even if the voter submits three votes, only the last one will be counted. If multiple choices are allowed, enable multi-vote and specify how many votes each participant or keypad can submit. Choose your other options by learning more about each of them when hovering over the eye icon. If you want to vote completely anonymously and don't require a voting grid, select the No Grid option from the Grid Type section. The Voting Rules section allows you to choose between a simple majority, two-thirds majority, and custom majority rules. Town Vote will automatically calculate pass-fail based on the percentage of votes and the chosen voting rule. The Ignore Non-Voters toggle, when turned on, will only calculate pass-fail based on the population that actually voted on the motion, not the full registered population. For example, if this setting is turned on, you may have 400 people registered in your participant list, but only 200 people submitted their vote, so majority calculations will be based on the number of votes received. In most cases, we recommend leaving this option enabled. Click Save at the bottom of the dialog box. Your new motion will immediately populate the item list below. From the same section, you also have the option to preview your vote, apply the settings to all votes in the agenda list, and vote immediately when pressing the Vote Now button. The item list on the agenda screen contains all motions created for this voting session. On the right side of the item list, you will find several actions that can be performed. The Voting Rule button allows you to change the voting rule from simple majority two-thirds majority, and custom majorities right from the agenda screen, making it a great way to change the voting rule on the fly. Pressing the pre-vote button will bring up the pre-vote screen, where you can manage the speaker's queue, take notes, and set a timer for debates all in one convenient location. The Vote Now button brings up a preview of the motion where you can have the option to begin the vote or go back to the agenda screen.
The Edit Topic action brings up the same dialog box that appeared when we created our first motion, which allows us to edit the grid type and voting rule for the motion. This can also be brought up by double-clicking the motion text itself. The Duplicate Topic button duplicates the motion with the exact same parameters, meaning the grid type and voting rule will be carried over. This is a great way to speed up the process of creating motions and or amendments when the grid type and voting rule are the same, or when only a small change is needed between two votes. Finally, pressing the Delete Topic button will remove the motion from the item list. To begin your first vote, press the Vote Now button to the right of your new motion. This brings up a preview of the motion, where you can have the option to start the vote or go back to the agenda screen. We'll proceed by selecting Open Vote or pressing Enter. When the vote is open, all registered keypads can now be used. When pressing 1 for Yes or 2 for No on a keypad, the total number of votes on the screen should increase showing that the vote has been received by the system. Pressing the space bar will bring up the Close Vote screen. From there, you can press the Close Vote button to end the vote, or simply press Enter. Immediately upon closing the vote, TownVote will aggregate the results automatically and indicate whether the motion passed or failed. Press the space bar again to leave the voting screen and go back to the main agenda screen. Now that the vote has been completed, the Vote Now button for that motion has been replaced with a Review button. This allows you to return to the voting screen to see the full breakdown of the voting results. Once the vote has been finalized, it cannot be voted on again, so try duplicating the motion if you want to reattempt the vote. If you need to extend the voting screen to an external display, such as a projector, TV, or monitor, this can be accomplished by clicking Settings on the left sidebar, or press Escape, then enabling the Projector View button. Once enabled, when you click Vote Now or Review, the voting screen will automatically move to its own separate window, allowing you to easily drag it to your second monitor, TV, or projector. Utilizing Projector View allows you to hide certain town vote features, like the agenda screen, operator panel, and participants list from the view of the audience. To create a report, navigate to the Report section on the main agenda screen. From here, you can retrieve the data from any of your past voting sessions. TownVote automatically saves the data from each session and stores it in the Active section of the Reports page. To archive a session, select it, then press the Archive button at the bottom. All of your archived sessions can then be accessed from the Archived tab. To export a report, Select the session that you would like to export, then click Reports. You will be greeted with various formatting options, including the ability to choose your preferred file format. The optimal report format for business meetings and elections can be found on the Voting tab. For our current voting session, we'll export the report in XLSX format, which allows us to access it from Microsoft Excel. Once you've finished formatting your report, Click the Export button to export the file using the format of your choice. The software will remember your choices next time, so you don't have to do this after every session. Please be patient, as the export may take a while, depending on the number of votes taken and the participants voting. That covers the basics of setting up a voting session and creating a report in TownVote. If you have further questions, please consult the knowledge base for more detailed information on the advanced features of the software, as well as troubleshooting tips. Thanks again for choosing TownVote. We hope you have a wonderful day and wish you success at your next meeting or event.